Hi, I'm Nicholas, and this is my final project demo video for CGDD3103 App Extension and Scripting. If you are watching this and are not in my class, especially if you subscribed from another video like these, I say thank you for checking this video out too. If you randomly got recommended this video, well, I hope you enjoy it as well. Without further ado, let's go through the project requirements. You can hear the background music playing from the start, and hovering over buttons causes the sound effects to play. Additionally, clicking a button causes a different sound effect to play. I did not put sound effects on every button, as I felt this sounded tedious. Instead, I only put them on what I considered to be the most important buttons. Next, I created an audio studio where you can adjust your audio settings. I can configure the volume for the background music. By sliding to the max, the volume becomes louder, and sliding to the min, the volume becomes silent. The same volume settings can be applied to the sound effects, which can be tested with this button. Next, I want to show the channel changing. Select mono to switch to mono. Select stereo to switch to stereo select surround to switch to surround, and so on. I'm not sure why the song changes every time I change the channel, but I was not able to resolve this issue before submitting the project. Now, I'm going to show a special feature for my game, an interactive mp3 player I programmed. I created all of the graphics in Google Slides, and I am very proud of how it came out. We can pause and play the background music, and when I pause the music, the CD I animated stops spinning. We can skip to the next track, and the track name displays on the screen. We can shuffle the playlist by clicking the shuffle button, and they will play in a different order. If you press this button, the tracks will play in order. And if you press the repeat button, the song will repeat. And later down the line, when we're playing the third-person shooter aspect of this game, you will hear the track and that game repeat. A little secret is that if you hover over this Kyoko decal, she will stop dancing. And the same happens for this Junko decal. Now let us save these changes that we've made and head to graphics. I animated all of these buttons in Unity, and they were also created in Google Slides. We first want to adjust the resolution settings. We can decrease it to 640 by 480 and increase it to the max of whatever machine you are using. So for mine, it is 2880 by 1800. If you play this game on a different display, then the max resolution should be different because I implemented this resolution configuration using the resolution array. And the upper bound of that array should be the max resolution of your connected screen. And in real life, I tested this by connecting it to my TV uh, with an HDMI cable. So as you can see, I can't max it out past uh, 1920 by 1080, which is the resolution of my TV. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah, that was pretty neat. Up next is V-Sync, or Vertical Sync. V-Sync is a setting that has the game wait until the current frame has finished rendering before rendering the next frame. V-Sync is currently enabled on my device and the frame rate is around 40 to 50 FPS. But if I disable V-Sync, the frame rate increases to the high 50s and low 60s. Anti-aliasing, also called D-Flicker in some games like Super Smash Bros. Brawl, uh, is the next setting we will investigate. With anti-aliasing on, the game smooths out the jagged edges associated with lower resolutions. With anti-aliasing disabled, the image is clearer, but jagged pixels are very apparent on the cube, cylinder, and sphere. When I enable anti-aliasing, the edges are smoothed out but blurrier. For now, I'm going to leave it off. Next, we are going to return to our max resolution and investigate the darkroom, the final settings menu. The darkroom is a studio I made to show off the different shadow types in Unity. The default is hard mode, where the shadows are less realistic, have a harder edge, but the processing power required to render them is much less. 
Then there is Soft Shadow Mode, which has more realistic, smoother shadows that require more processing power. Think of it as the anti-aliasing of shadows. Finally, shadows can be completely disabled. However, I'm going to leave the shadows on hard mode. Now I'm going to mess around with the settings. Turn BGM off, max out SFX, channel mono, reduce graphics, disable VSync, anti-aliasing and shadows, and exit the game. What we want to do is load the game and test to see if the settings are restored. Well, there was a glitch where the BGM slider was loaded correctly based on the file it read from, but the volume itself stayed the same. I'd have to do some debugging to figure out this error. Fortunately, all of the other settings seem to have loaded correctly. Mono channel, low resolution, and disabled VSync, anti-aliasing, and shadows. Now that we have gone through the main requirements, I will enter the minigame mode where I met the rest of the requirements. I really wanted to focus on the settings menu for this game, since that is what I was most interested in. Uh, but since this project did have other requirements, I incorporated this simple third-person shooter game to meet the rest of them. Alright, now we are in the game, and I'm not sure why the illumination is so strong here. It didn't look so intense in the editor. I created a third-person camera using the Cinemachine package. Uh, controlled by the mouse, it can rotate and translate. I also created a health bar GUI for the player, which is displayed in the bottom left corner. I created different projectiles and used scripts to manage shooting the projectile. If you collect them, they are added to the inventory, and we can see three bullets with colors red, green, and blue. When you select a weapon type from the inventory, that is the projectile your weapon will shoot. As I shoot with them, the quantity in the inventory decreases. I created an inventory storage system with a minimum of six items, meaning that if even zero items are collected, there will be six empty slots displayed. I implemented this using a linked list data structure and displayed the name of the item and the amount of items collected. Some of the items I pre-programmed to have a higher count when collected, such as the ammo packs. If all of an item is used up, the item gets deleted from the inventory and the rest of the items shift up to fill the empty slot. It stores up to 12 items and you can't collect any more until dropping one. The debug.log message says the inventory is full and the editor if you try to collect a 13th item. The inventory storage menu can be toggled by the user hitting the I key. I included three different healthcare items that increase health by 10, 20, and 30 points. In this build, the medkits do not change the player's health, because I accidentally removed the health script from the health bar. However, I fixed this in the Unity editor, and I recorded my live reaction to figuring out this issue earlier, so I will include that later on in the video. I created a 3D GUI menu to serve as the uh, enemy health bar that always faces the camera. This blue enemy is of type projectile. It is idle when it is far from the player, but starts chasing the player if you get too close. It will also begin to shoot you if you get even closer than that. The second class of enemy is the melee enemy that patrols along the waypoints that I will show afterwards in the editor. If it gets too close, then it will perform a melee attack against you, and it will use its stick weapon. In both combat scenarios, the player loses health, either when it collides with the enemy projectile or with the melee weapon. Oh, now you can hear the song has looped again. This is because, as I said earlier, the player is on repeat mode, so we know that part of the MP3 player works. Now, let's beat the game. Basically, this is a huge maze with over 12 different obstacles on the level floor, and you can see the Celeste sprite peeking over the wall, meaning you're near the end. Uh-oh, looks like we're about to find out if Game Over works. And it does. Alright, we'll have to beat the game now. And we've entered the ending. So we have been captured by Celeste. And uh, there's nothing you can do, so we hit the escape and it ends the level. Uh, the final mode, debug mode, does not really do anything. It was a scrapped idea I had earlier on that I just did not take out yet. Let's check out an earlier build of the game where the background music volume setting did load correctly. 
I have no idea what changed between this build and the last build, but I wanted to show it did work at some point. Now in the editor, I wanted to show the waypoints. This is the end screen, and there is a glitch you may encounter, so I'll show that in a second. Is the medkit one here? Oh, that was the problem. Hold on one second. I can actually fix this. Let's check that out. Oh. Screen recording plus Unity, very bad combo. Really bad on my machine. That's why I had to have the resolution so low. Did I accidentally take the script off of this? Yeah, I did. So, it should be on the health bar, but it's not. So the med kit does work, I'm pretty sure. Yep, there we go. Alright, so the problem was I accidentally duplicated the health script. Um, and I put it on the third person enemy or third person player and I disabled it on the freaking health bar it was supposed to be the other way around and then I accidentally built it that way and that's what I I submitted so I wanted to show real quickly the ending glitch this guy shoots you too much and it causes you to get stuck in the air and we reach the end your character is too high up to activate my end game trigger I think this glitch happens because of the character controller component uh, but we can take our player down a bit and show the ending is triggered and then we click here to escape and we are done. That's pretty sweet. Now I gotta take this video and edit it significantly down so wish me luck. Other requirements for this project included making this demo video as I'm doing now and making a text file that contains instructions for the game. I will be including that in my discussion post on D2L. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration, and to all my classmates watching this, I wish you all good luck on your final exams, uh, and I hope we all have a great summer.